I look at Kathy this morning. She's my Vietnamese daughter. You know, they had a, a nail shop near our house. And I went in there and met Kathy and Katie and Joe, three sisters. And, you know, I began to take them chocolates and little gifts. And then they began to come to my house. And we began to study the Word of God. And, you know, Kathy and her family, they're raised Buddhist. But the seed got inside them. And today, Kathy and Katie are born-again Christians. <laughs> the seed! She just told me that she passed all of her exams. She's in school and got B's. <laughs> Hallelujah! I've got a smart seed sitting down there. <laughs> Let's look at another one. Food. How sweet are your words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Sometimes you can feel like you have a ooh, bad taste in your mouth from people and a bad taste in your mouth from circumstances, a bad taste in your mouth about yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? But you can eat the Word and some way it sweetens up your mouth. You know, sometimes you just have bad breath. You're saying bad things. Nobody likes to be around somebody with bad breath. You know, I try to chew gum before I come in the service because I feel for people <laughs> if I don't. But when you start saying what God says, oh, how sweet it is. When we were in India, we had a very intellectual guide, Rishi, very intellectual, very nice, very handsome, and uh, seemed totally disinterested in spiritual things. But I was totally wrong, and I got to lead him to the Lord. It was such a wonderful time. He has received the Lord. Now, I sent him a Bible. And he texts me, thank God for this wonderful cell phone. And he texts me and says, I'm reading the Bible. Tell me where to read it. Now tell me what I should do and pray for my business. And where shall I go to church? <laughs> Folks, is that sweet? And sometimes when you look at people that you're trying to witness to, and they just, blah. And I'll tell you something I've done. I have a big sign on the front of our uh, wall in front of our house, and it says, Jesus loves you. So the other day, a realtor came to see me that sold us our house and just wanted to visit, and he said, have you gotten in trouble over that sign? I said, no, should I? He said, you probably will. I said, I probably won't. I said, I love this neighborhood, and I believe they're going to get saved. And folks, it's sweet to know that Jesus loves you. Everybody else is hating but Jesus loves us. Amen? That's sweet to me to tell people, oh, Jesus loves you. He'll bring you through. Oh, I'm a mess. Oh, he loves messes. Hallelujah. And then do. Let my teaching drop as the rain. My speech still as rain drop, as the dew, as rain drops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. Folks, there are times you just need a refreshing. You just need a little bush, a little boost. Uh, you just feel blah. Anybody here ever have the blahs? Raise your hand. Come on, liars, get your hand up. You just feel blah. But I have found I can start speaking the word and reading the word. And some way it brings a freshness. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll come through. It'll be okay. And, and you can really get attitudes of rejection. You can think, well, these people don't really like me. I try to reach out to them. They don't reach back and blah, blah, blah. You know, I have a hook out to go to Syria to do a healing meeting in Damascus in one other city. So I heard about a man who could connect me. And so I connected with men. Oh, yes, yes, I'll get the people. Yes, I want you to do it. It's going to happen. But I didn't hear anything about him. So my mind said, you know, well, he doesn't really want to do it. He, he, look, he doesn't connect with you. Blah, blah, blah. Do you ever get the blahs? Everybody say the blahs. And you know, the Lord said to me when I was in the blahs of this, just a simple scripture, everybody knows it. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. The fact that he hasn't called you yet is working for good. So I thought, drop it and leave it with God. And within 24 hours, he called me. He said, it's cooking, Marilyn. It's going together. Hallelujah. Folks, watch the blahs when you've got the word that can take you out of the blahs. Amen? Say, I won't forget.
God's word can take me out of the blahs. And then I look at wealth. Woo! Everybody's financially needy. I know, I know, I understand, totally there. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. Folks, my greatest treasure is not in what's in my bank account, my savings, what's in my house, what I'm wearing. This is where my wealth really is. This is a place of wealth. And for, I was thinking now, I've been on television over 40 years. God is so miraculous how he has taken care of me. And all the people we get to reach, which is the biggest wealth to God, are people. God loves people. They tell us our program reaches 2 billion people a day, every weekday. And you know, we're in some challenging times, but I'm going to tell you, God called me to cover the earth with the word. He is not through with me, and he will meet me financially. Because the word says he will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That didn't say part of them, half of them. Didn't say they stop when you're 77. It says he will supply all your needs. Stay in the Word. Let the Word be powerful to you. Let it be the most important thing of your life. And here comes the last one. The Word is a sword. Isn't this something? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I was in Kirkland, Washington, preaching. This is some years ago. Maybe, maybe four years ago. And a woman had something that a uh, young mother she was dying of they could not find what was wrong but some way her body could not assimilate food and she was just going down mentally emotionally her name is Cindy and it just a very serious situation and my heart went out to her and they said the doctors have tried this they've given this test and that test and I put Cindy on my hit list every day for just one year one year and you know the sword of the word whatever she had and it was a very bad condition whatever cut that thing out of her and today she's healthy and strong I saw her not too long ago she's so healthy and now she's gaining more weight than she wants to and her teenagers are so thrilled she's a mama again she can do the things she used to do. But what did it? What brought Cindy through? What was it? It was the sword of the word. Everybody say the sword of the word. I want to have her on our television sometime. It's such an outstanding testimony. But I put her on a hit list. It wasn't hit and miss. It was hit every day. It was hit every day. Everybody say hit every day. I took the word like a hammer every day on Cindy. Every day, every day, every day, every day. And it worked. Everybody say the word will work in any situation if you mix it with faith.